there were battles over Colorado's water even before we were a state. Water wars have always been part of the culture in the West. In part because it's in short supply. We all acknowledge that no more water is being created. We drink water, irrigate our crops with water, and of course, play in the water. We have to find ways of using the water we have more efficiently, more responsibly. Every day we try to take everything we have and put it to use and not waste anything. But as our cities grow. We were 40,000 people, we're 107 a day. We know that the population is expected to double by 2050. There are more questions than just where your next glass of water will come from. All the easy water rights, all the easy water supplies were gone years ago. How is our water use impacting the environment? There are better ways to do this. Are there ways to reuse the water we already have? Lots of hard questions, no easy answers. Welcome to our Colorado where water runs gold. The sparkling streams of Colorado's high country, pure Rocky Mountain spring water. For centuries, this has been the lifeline of the West. Hello, I'm Ann Trujillo. And I'm Russell Haythorn. Over the course of the next 30 minutes, we're going to take a look at the growth factors impacting our state's most precious natural resource, water. This summer got off to an ominous start. After a dry winter with a below normal snowpack, we've had a hot and dry summer, and that has meant more lawn watering, lower river and reservoir levels, and the other thing that is draining our system right now, our growing population. Everywhere you look, everywhere you turn, Colorado is growing. Since 2010, our population has grown by nearly 600,000. The last census estimate put our population at just over 5.6 million people. What's not increasing is Colorado's water supply. Viewers like Dennis writes, seems to me that if we continue with this uncontrolled growth, there won't be enough water for the people who are here. And you writes, I see the rapid fire development and the massive increase in congestion. Where will the water come from to support all of these people? While the most important water to you may be what comes out of your tap, the water that comes out of the faucets in our homes only account for 5 to 10 percent of water used. Colorado's agriculture industry uses the most water, about 86 percent of the water used in our state. The rest of our water is used by businesses and industries. Where people actually see how much water they're using and that provides a real motivation to maybe cut back. DU professor Hillary Heyman says, we should be thinking about our water sources all the time. Just looking at your water bill monthly can help you realize how easy it is to cut back. If you don't know how much you're using or you have a set bill, then there's really no motivation to save water. Concern over our water is nothing new. Water utilities have plans that look decades out, and those plans can either be sped up or slowed down depending on the need. The cities of Thornton and Parker, for example, have plans to eventually pipe in water from places like northern Colorado and the western slope. But the biggest water users, our Colorado farmers, are seeing the biggest drain on their resources. The tensions associated with it are enormous. Urban expansion gobbling up not just water, but the farmland used to grow our food. It has just been as, almost as consistent as gravity. Greeley and Fort Collins are experiencing an explosion of growth. Greeley now has 107,000 people, Fort Collins 175,000, and the state demographics office is predicting both will double in size over the next 20 to 30 years. Up here in northern Colorado, there's a new growing metro area that basically we'll affectionately refer to as NOCO. I moved to Greeley in 1971. We were 40,000 people. We're 107 a day. It's a hot spot in part because it's becoming harder for people to afford living in Metro Denver. The alternative becomes Northern Colorado, which is just 45 minutes away. Richard Werner with Upstate Colorado says there's a common expression here, move until you can afford to stop. In Denver, people commonly move to the burbs to find cheaper homes. In Northern Colorado, you start at the foothills and move east. In Fort Collins, the median home price is now $400 ten thousand dollars as you get further east the values drop in Windsor the median home price is three hundred eighty thousand and by the time you get to Greeley the median price is two hundred seventy one thousand still expensive but one hundred forty thousand cheaper than Fort Collins 
And no matter where people move, there is still a need for water. The challenge today is that water rights are getting very expensive. That is not the way a, a river in uh, the state of Colorado should look. As the northern Colorado communities expand in the coming years, water will be paramount. Greeley, Fort Collins, and other cities are already securing water rights to serve future growth. Greeley, for example, we're right now, we use a 50-year planning horizon, and we're working on our water supplies for 2065. Fort Collins even requires developers to purchase raw water before building anything new. And it's becoming rapidly more expensive and that's really uh, impacting how communities are developing. Just to give you an idea of how expensive, the Colorado Big Thompson Project pipes water from the western slope under the divide and back to the front range. It's called CBT water. 10 years ago in 2008, a single acre foot cost $9,350. Today, an acre foot is worth 31,000, a 232% jump in a decade. There are better ways to do this. Environmental activist Gary Walkner is with the group Save the Colorado, Save the Pooter. The group says unharnessed growth comes at the peril of Colorado's pristine rivers. They are suing a new reservoir project called Chimney Hollow that would serve more than 10 no-co cities, including Loveland, Greeley, Erie, and Broomfield. The Erie is one of the worst. The suit, which has halted progress on the reservoir temporarily, claims those cities didn't do enough to mitigate environmental impacts. They're growing uh, way faster than they should be, or, or if they should be at all. Wachner suggests NOCO adopt Southern California's model of paying people per square foot to rip out their lawns. The big kahuna uh, is lawns. About half of all the water that's used in a city is used to keep the grass green. The water we use here in Colorado comes from many different sources, but about half of it comes from the Colorado River, which only flows on the western side of the state. However, about three quarters of Colorado's population lives on the east side of the state. As you just heard, it's expensive to move water, and some people think it shouldn't be done at all. It would be irresponsible for us to develop the state without planning for the amount of water that we're going to need. Everything we know and love about our Colorado, outdoor recreation, innovation, agriculture, all hinge on one thing, water. We all acknowledge that no more water is being created. We have to find ways of using the water we have more efficiently, more responsibly. By most accounts, the Colorado River is already overappropriated, supplying water to 40 million people in seven states across the southwestern U.S. And now the four upper basin states, including Colorado, are accusing Arizona of wasteful practices. We have one water user who is basically operating for their own benefit to the detriment of everybody else. One of the central issues this year is drought. A dry winter on the plains and low snowpack in the high country could be catastrophic, especially to lower basin states if the pattern continues. We are one year away from Lake Powell being at such low levels that it can't generate power anymore. We're all really very concerned. Um, that's why we've all gotten together. The water users have gotten together in California, Nevada, Arizona, and Mexico's at the table too, to talk about water conservation. Rose Davis works for the Bureau of Reclamation at Lake Mead along the Arizona-Nevada line. There's a lot of people working on solutions, but we really need a few years of great snowpack in the upper basin. That snowpack would help not only downstream, but here in Colorado, because all up and down the river, there is one question. Do we have enough water to support the roaring pace of growth? If we're not smart about it, the answer to that is going to be no. No one uses more water than Colorado's farmers. It's not something we're wasting, it's being put to use. Up next on Our Colorado, we'll show you what farmers all along the Colorado River are doing to conserve water. It's going to change the way water is used throughout our service area. And we'll show you what water providers on the Front Range are doing to make sure they not only have the water you need. It's a bucket for us to stick water in during wet years. But can get it to you when you want it. And this is a 72 inch steel pipe.
Welcome back to our Colorado, where water runs gold. As you know, your water bill skyrockets in the summer months, but you're still not using nearly as much water as Colorado's farmers and ranchers. While they use four out of every five gallons of water consumed in Colorado, they're not wasting any of it. It's not something we're wasting is being put to use. Farmers here in Colorado are using innovative conservation methods, including drip irrigation systems and giant low flow center pivot sprinkler systems. Every day we try to take everything we have and put it to use and not waste anything. And downstream along the Colorado River in Arizona, they're laser leveling fields, so there's no runoff. All the water goes to the crops. What happens is you're keeping water in the root zone. Our efficiency of use of water when you factor in the leaching of salts is approaching drip within a couple percentage points. A growing concern in many rural Colorado communities are water rights. Some farmers and communities sold their rights from the Platte and other rivers to water utilities in other cities decades ago. The farmers have been leasing that water back, but now the cities need it because demand is increasing. You're seeing farms change, you're seeing communities change, you're seeing uh, a, a culture shift. To keep up with that demand, staples like Chatfield Reservoir are being given new purposes. Chatfield Reservoir was built for flood control, not to hold drinking water, but about a year ago, water levels at Chatfield began to rise. The Army Corps of Engineers agreeing to let communities store water there, adding 20,000 acre feet of water to the reservoir, enough to provide water to about 40,000 homes for a year. Moving and storing water is nothing new. The Highline Canal has been moving water around the city for more than 135 years. And Denver Water has been using pipes and tunnels to move water from the West Slope to the Front Range for nearly as long. Their biggest challenge right now is to store it so that you can use it when you need it. Right now we're standing on one of the treated water storage tanks that is already in service. One of three new water storage tanks that are simply put large. We're about uh, 300 feet or about a football field long here on top of this tank. The only way to really get a good view of just how large the three new tanks at the Hillcrest treated water storage facility are is from the air. Three new large tanks just west of I-25 south of Thomas Jefferson High School, each capable of holding 15 million gallons of water. Combined, that's enough water to nearly fill 70 Olympic-sized swimming pools. The Hillcrest Treated Water Storage Facility is about 25% of the treated water that we store throughout our system. The three tanks are replacing two similarly sized tanks that have been on this site for about 50 years. Denver 7 first showed you the site two years ago when these new tanks were nothing but giant holes in the ground. The tanks are 30, 30 feet high and we had to excavate about 25 feet below. And the site's about 40 acres. So, you know, back in the day, they did some serious planning on keeping some extra space so we could actually build the new tanks while keeping the old ones in service. The tanks and the pump house are being replaced not just due to age, but because of growing water needs in Denver Water's service area. As part of what Denver Water looks at when it's investing in its infrastructure is not only to maintain the water service and reliability of today, but also of tomorrow. Right now, Denver Water serves about 1.4 million water customers in Denver and surrounding communities. In the middle of winter, those customers use about 100 million gallons a day. In the spring and fall, that can double to 200 million a day. And in the heat of summer, that can grow to 350 to 400 million gallons. That's enough water to fill and empty these three new tanks nearly nine times in just one day. So we really take an all-in approach to ensure we have a reliable water supply in the future as well. We're looking at also finding additional supply through reuse options, through added uh, efficiency measures throughout our uh, community, and also looking for new supply options. Denver Water's worked really hard to, to change its culture and work with partners instead of um, at odds with partners. Many Front Range water providers are now connecting their systems. So if one provider loses their supply or has a problem with their system, customers don't go without water. It's gonna take more than just working out for your own needs. We're now looking more collectively. How can we make sure that everybody's needs are being met in a way that makes sense for everyone?
With construction everywhere you turn, Thornton is one of those cities thirsty for water. And to quench that thirst, the city is now trying to figure out how to access water it owns from the Poudre River. The city started in the mid-1980s to acquire these water rights and the farms that went along with it. So they've come here to northern Colorado where they want to dig up this entire road and bury a water pipe. A plan that's been opposed by both environmentalists and people who want to see an alternative to their road being dug up. And for me, I just thought, that's a really crummy thing to do. It's unconscionable. They would like to see the water left in the Poudre River until it's further downstream, piping it out closer to I-25. Not only is it a viable alternative, but it's the best alternative. But the city of Thornton says the longer the water stays in the Poudre, the more contaminated it gets passing through cities like Fort Collins. We've determined that there's room within the road right of way to construct our pipeline, our 48 inch pipeline within the road. The issue is far from settled. After months of fighting, Larimer County commissioners have put off a vote on the plan until at least the end of the year. While it may seem like a lot to pipe water from northern Colorado to Thornton, some water travels even further to get to your home. Like Denver, most water districts started planning for growth years ago and bought the rights to water from various creeks, rivers, and reservoirs long before they needed it. And while most don't need the water right now, they're close enough, they're having to figure out both how to get it and where to store it. What you see in the background now is um, six years of filling. There's about 27,000 acre feet of water there. This is Parker's Reuter Hess Reservoir. It's about 105 feet deep right now. Eventually, it will be about 165 feet deep, holding more water for more people. It's a bucket for us to stick water in during wet years and uh, the ability to pull water out during dry years. The water filling Reuter Hess right now comes from Cherry Creek just a few miles away. But the city is working on plans to bring in water it owns up near Islip, about 150 miles to the northeast. But we have the water and we're now just putting together a plan on how you actually move that water from there to here to store it. They want to start storing that water now because Parker expects its population to triple by the year 2045. It's the same story up and down the Front Range. The Aurora Highlands will feature every category of housing from affordable attached homes to multifamily groupings. Aurora Highlands, Aerotropolis, Gaylord by DIA, just some of the developments already being built in Aurora, already Colorado's third largest city. Aurora expects to grow from about 365,000 now to more than 700,000 by 2070. Look at the maps provided by the city. Everything you see in white is undeveloped. The city's director of water says, not only do they have the room to grow, they have the water too. We're 95% surface water, so we get almost all of our water from the snowpack. Marshall Brown says getting water from several sources, not just one, is key to its supply. We get the water supply out of three river basins. Aurora has bought up rights to water from the Colorado River, the South Platte, and the Arkansas River basins, and rights to a reservoir, Wild Horse, more than 100 miles away near Alma in Park County. And now the city is looking at a new source, an old gold mine, London Mine near Breckenridge, where mining has stopped, but water rights are still tied up. So that's one area where we can look to potentially shift supplies that were used for mining historically over to municipal use. One of the largest cities in the world is already on the verge of running out of water. After the break, see what Cape Town has done to keep from drying up. And we'll show you some simple things you can do around your own home to save a little bit of water. If you need an example of what can happen if you run out of water, check out Cape Town, South Africa. They thought they were going to run out of water this past spring. But by limiting people to using 13 gallons of water a day, telling people they can't water their lawns unless they have a well, and taking other conservation measures, they pushed off day zero until sometime in 2019, maybe even later. The goal here is to never face a day zero in Colorado, but the truth is much of Colorado is high desert and we just don't have as much water as we'd like. But new technology being used on the other side of the globe could be a big part of the solution. Mark Stewart traveled across the Pacific to Singapore to check it out. Just looking to the horizon, Singapore is surrounded by water. 
Yet the issue here is storage. The island is small, so finding places to keep usable water is limited. To produce new water, the Singapore solution, what's known as new water. Water is basically reused. It's cleaned and purified using a high-tech system to filter it and ultraviolet light to disinfect it. The process is used to help provide about 40 percent of Singapore's water supply. Singapore's new water can be used for drinking, but in most cases, businesses use it to power their factories. Can the technology there be applied to Colorado? Absolutely. Denver is testing out a similar system, taking used water, making it clean again. This is video from a demonstration just this year. With the drought and climate change that we're facing right now in Colorado and across the West, it's really important that we take care of our water resources. It's not a novelty. It may be a necessity as more people move here and industry grows. The most recent state water plan is expecting the population and the water gap to double by 2050, meaning that we're going to need more water supplies than we currently have. Inside your home, some of the easiest ways to conserve the most water come from the smallest rooms. If you have older toilets, you've all heard this, you can switch to low flow toilets. Newer toilets use about a gallon and a half of water per flush. Older toilets, three to five gallons per flush. If you flush five times a day, that's a savings of 3,600 gallons per year. If you like baths, take one occasionally, but try to stick to the shower on most days. That's because the average bath uses 50 gallons of water, whereas the average eight minute shower only uses 17 gallons. Your washing machine is one of the biggest users of water in your house, and we realize it's hard to cut back on that, but you can do things like opt out of the extra rinse cycle. And you can do things like reuse your bath towels multiple times before you wash them. Good job, good job. <laughs> Outside your house, green lawns are pretty, but they also use a ton of water. So you can do things like rock beds and plants and flowers to reduce your water use. If you use a sprinkler system, make sure you're watering no more than three times per week. And finally, some homeowners have even converted a portion of their lawns to artificial turf, which uses no water and over the course of the summer saves thousands of gallons. If you have some ideas about maintaining Colorado's water supply, we want to hear from you. Join the conversation right now on the Denver Channel Facebook page or email us at ourco at thedenverchannel.com. Whether conserving water in your own home or being more respectful of it when you're boating, swimming, or fishing, just making a few simple changes can make a world of difference. We all need to remember to take better care of our water in our Colorado. For all of us at Denver 7, we'll see you next time.